Hey guys, my last video was me reflecting on the last two plus years that I spent at IBM as a software engineer. So I think it's only fitting that I give you guys an update on what I'm up to now. I started working as a software engineer at Microsoft three weeks ago, and I can't really speak too much about what the day-to-day -day is like since it's only been around three weeks and I've been doing orientation and training thus far, and I'm just now kind of starting to get my own tasks and stories. But I will talk about how I ended up getting this job and things that I'm excited about and things that I'm nervous about. I got this job without actively recruiting. Basically what happened was a recruiter reached out to me on LinkedIn and this was in January. So in January, Microsoft was really hiring a lot of software engineers to come work at their Atlanta office, which they just built. I wasn't really interested at the time in January, so I kind of told the recruiter to check back in in a couple months. She did that in March, and then I kind of put it off again, and then in April, I figured I might as well do it just to see you know, how I stack up in this interview process since I hadn't been practicing, so I hadn't been doing leak code. And I did want to get a feel for like what my value would be if I wanted to negotiate a higher salary at IBM. So I ended up doing a hacker rank. I don't think it's called a hacker rank, but essentially it's an online assessment. And it's like a couple of coding questions. I didn't even finish it and you run against test cases. And that's the first step. Once I passed that, the next step was to do a virtual onsite, which had maybe like four interviews, maybe four or five, maybe like four. I, I actually don't remember. And I didn't do very well on them, frankly, so I was really surprised to get an offer. And I was kind of kicking myself because the question that I really didn't do well on was a question that I had actually seen before on Leap Code, but just couldn't remember how to do it. But it was good enough to get an offer, um, but I did get like the offer at a lower level than I normally would have wanted. So I wasn't really sure if I was going to take it. There are a number of like concerns that I have, and I'll kind of mention it in a later part of this video, but I met with the team that was my prospective team that I now joined, and I was really, really excited about the work they were doing, and I really liked the manager, so I ended up accepting the offer, and I, like I said, I started July 5th, so, you know, that kind of whole process was from January to July, but I really only started in late April and then I got the offer in June, I want to say. So it's a pretty quick process once you actually get going and I'm really excited about it. Like I said earlier, I can't talk too much about what the day-to-day -day experience is like since it's only been a couple of weeks, but I do want to talk about what I'm really excited about and things that I was excited for when I accepted the offer. So number one is growth opportunity. I think Microsoft provides a lot of growth long-term, more so than IBM in regards to Microsoft itself is not going away since we all know Azure and other top cloud providers are not going away. And I think it provides a lot of growth opportunity for its employees since it's a pretty well-regarded name in the industry, as well as like the work-life balance. I think it's well-regarded and it doesn't have a reputation of working its employees too hard. So. That was already in its favor, and the second is the actual team itself that I was joining and am on now. So that team is the high-performance computing team within Azure, as opposed to being an application developer where there are people that are logging on to my application that I helped write and they see the UI and whatnot. I'm now writing code to monitor and gather telemetry. So it's a little bit closer to the data engineer role which obviously, or I shouldn't say obviously, for those of you that, that don't know, but I'm getting my master's in machine learning from Georgia Tech part-time. So I do want to do things with data and kind of get close to an ML engineer adjacent role. And this was the perfect fit. Without a doubt, the biggest concern that I have is relocation. I was really hoping for a remote option, but I do have to move to Atlanta. So I'll be moving in two weeks and I'll be coming into the office like two days a week or so. I was hoping for a remote option, mostly because my girlfriend is moving to DC because she just got her master's and got a new job offer in DC, which is awesome. And we both have a ton of friends there and being long distance is probably gonna suck at first, frankly. Um, so it's gonna take some getting used to, but 
I'm hoping that I'll be able to adjust and make some new friends. I'm not super worried about that since I'm pretty social and I had to make new friends when I went to college out of state. So it won't be like the first time I've had to do that. But being long distance is definitely the kicker. Aside from that, I'm super excited. Uh, so far, it's been great. Everyone's super friendly, and I really like the work that I am doing, so I will be doing, and the team is super, super awesome. Uh, I guess the only other regret is I didn't study. Like I said, I didn't really study for those interviews since I pretty much did it largely as practice at first, and because I didn't do very well, I think I got hired on at a lower level than I would like to, but I'm kind of hoping that just with time, I can prove that I am a very competent programmer, it's just that I didn't study algorithm question, questions before doing it. So hopefully I'll be able to get a promotion soon and you know go up to that level above new grad engineer pretty quickly. Mm-hmm.